the Intel Sandy Bridge era was not one of prominence. It was more of one of usability. Now, the Intel Core i3-2120 was almost, I mean, very, very close to the minimal amount of performance you could receive from one of these Sandy Bridge chips. Only thing worse, I believe, was the 2100. But, unfortunately for Intel, actually, I wouldn't say unfortunately, they might still be usable. But to test if a CPU is still competent, you first have to have a test bench, which I pulled from a Dell Inspiron 620 that I found on eBay for about $35. Now, we are missing one thing, one key important thing. To test something, you first require an operating system. Now, I had multiple options to choose for this, but I decided on going with a controversial option not really but in my opinion i have heard it windows 8.1 now windows 8 it's not great i'll say that especially after using it it's a nightmare uh but i wouldn't say that i didn't enjoy using it and i wouldn't say that i did but it was functional enough to run google chrome and that's all i needed to do for that time so yeah windows 8 now, forgetting the fact that I chose maybe one of the worst operating systems of all time, I'm sure you're pretty confused on the actual specs of the Intel Core i3-2120. At least back in 2012, the i3-2120 came out with two cores, four threads, a base clock of 3.3 GHz, no boost clock, a TDP of 65 watts, a launch price of $139 built on the 32 nanometer Sandy Bridge process. And you can find one today, which is shocking to me, for about 3 to $15. I have seen some bargain bin deals on things like this. Now, after installing Windows, I took a good bit to reminisce on the process that got us here. If you look back, Sandy Bridge was the beginning of an era for Intel, which ended around 9th to 10th gen when Ryzen came over and took over the lead spot in the CPU market. Sandy Bridge is still usable today in its finest forms, but in the i3-2120, it is a very niche situation in which this processor can be used to its fullest potential, if any potential at all. Doing tasks such as web browsing, it was quite simple, installing drivers, going on eBay, and many other things. This computer worked flawlessly, almost too flawlessly, it felt. Uh, these Intel CPUs back from the Sandy Bridge era had Intel HD Graphics 2000, so I went ahead and installed the drivers for that. Got Chrome installed, and we were ready to start testing for the ease of usage. Now, I, I, re I restarted the computer so the drivers would update or whatever because it wasn't, even though it was working, it wasn't really. Booting into Windows, as shown earlier, was quite simple. Now, the ease of use, I would give about a 7 out of 10, especially considering what I was running with. Uh, it was not bad, definitely not bad, but wouldn't consider it to be great performance. Uh, certainly, I could go on to things like Google and search up things, and I could also do web browsing, but I did not check YouTube, which was one for it. I would have tried to do video playback, but I would have imagined, as tested by other people, it was around 360p or it would start to get a little stuttery. On only 6 gigabytes of RAM, I was a little bit limited, but I was more limited by the lack of more than two cores in this CPU. Now, back in 2012, I believe, when it was released, two cores was fine, not great, not terrible, but it was functional and usable at the same time. Nowadays, especially on Windows 8.1, even though that wasn't much of a uh, the, uh, demanding operating system, I think that's a good word, it wasn't much of a demanding operating system, it was certainly not very user-friendly, that's how I'd put it. Doing things such as going on eBay, uh, all of the images loaded up decently quick, um, load times were fine, especially on Ethernet, and everything else was functional to the best of its ability. 
After finishing up with that, I would do one final thing, which is an Ethernet test. Now you see, sucking back power through Ethernet tests are a good way of proving how much a CPU can handle. Typically, on my system right now, it could draw back the full gig, which we have gigabit internet and Ethernet. So, testing it on this, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see numbers up in the 800 megabit range. If you're looking for a conclusion, I'll give you this. The i3-2120 was neither the best CPU in Intel Sandy Bridge lineup, nor the most powerful. But, it did do one thing. It provided buyers with a cheap, easy-to-use CPU back in 2012. Two cores, four threads, 3.3 gigahertz. That was money at the time, especially for older games and usability with tasks like web browsing. Thankfully, in today's market, people have been able to afford i5 and i7 chips from the era, which outperformed it with great strain. I would not say that the i3-2120 is not usable, because that would be a lie. I would say, though, that if you have the option and want to spend a few extra dollars, I'm sure you could find a more expensive Sandy Bridge chip with much better performance. Thank you. Have a good night. That brings both you and I to the end of this video. Now, the journey through testing an i3-2120, I don't really know what I was trying to achieve. It's such an odd, odd CPU that I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to see. But it surprisingly shocked me. Now, I know I just did the conclusion, but an extra tidbit. If you watched all this way, please consider subscribing. It helps out the channel a ton. Thank you, and for the second time, have a good night.